Hello, I'm Edward Court and welcome to the 15th video in using Woodwind Instrument Designer, software for designing woodwind musical instruments. In this video, I'm going to talk about a new feature added in version 1.0.6, which is explicit support for designing with a hemispherical borehead. So most of us, well, I would, many of us do Native American style flutes uh, with a split, a split bore. Uh, that is, we, we create the bore with a router. And typically, unless we do a, a through bore, we have uh, a circular, um, in, in three-dimensional, um, sense a hemispherical end at the top of the bore. It's not flat like those that um, bore their flutes and then put a, a flat plug in it. It has a hemispherical end. In this latest version 1.0.6 I add explicit support for just that geometry. Um, will show how it will make such a geometry in the instrument representation and some changes in the optimizer strategies to handle um, that beast. So that said, let's bring up the program. And let's bring up one of the sample files. I'm just going to use um, the one inch bore starter that came with those sample files. And if we look at what that flute looks like, you can see it has a square end. Um, so that describes somebody that would bore this, this flute bore and then put a square ended plug to, to define the end of it. Well, what if we did the second scenario of using a router and, and split bore? So I'm going to change the top position of that bore uh, to do what I typically do. Again, we're still going to measure um, at the top end of the flue. I'm going to end the bore, though, an eighth of an inch higher up the flute. So what that looks like is and you can see just the, the bore extends a little bit higher than the, the start of the TSH. Now, to create that hemispherical end, we have added a new button, Create Hemi Head. Hemispherical is such a long word. And I click that, and it has created a number of points. First, let's see what it looks like. Notice it didn't make a new flute file. It modified the instrument that we already had up. And here is that hemispherical end. Um, and you can see why I, I move it an eighth of an inch back. That way the TSH doesn't uh, when I cut it, it doesn't impact the end of the bore. There's some, a little bit of space there. So it's as close as I can come with a hemispherical end at having the end of the bore even with the top of the TSH. Um, notice that when we made that um, hemispherical end, it still honored the, the top position, which was minus one-eighth. It's still minus one-eighth. Um, so that's as easy as it is to make a hemispherical bore top. Now, before version 1.06, the first four optimizer strategies would honor such a hemispherical end if we happened to put it in by hand, which is what I typically did. Um, now we have an easy button to do that. So they will, they'll, they'll still work just fine with this. So if you had a hemispherical end, you would push this button, create it, and then do your optimization. Let's just do a quick one for the fun of it. Um, let's first rename this and save it. 
we'll do a save as and we'll just put it to my desktop and we'll call it um, something clever like Hemi. And now you can see it's been saved to the, the desktop. We can use that. Now, now we'll also open the old one, which is still here, and change its end to what we had before. So an eighth of an inch above the TSH. Uh, to verify that, we have that flute with the bore end above the TSH and this flute identically with the bore end above the TSH but with a hemispherical end. Um, so that hemispherical end has, has two consequences. One, it has a certain amount of headspace, distance of flute bore above the splitting edge. It also has some bore below the splitting edge that's smaller than the rest of the bore. So WI Designer takes that all into account when it's doing the calculations. That's not to say you'll get a better flute with a square-ended bore compared to a hemispherical end. It's just that the calculations uh, have to take in that bore shape. Um, so if we were to take that hemispherical end, let's, this is a, a D-sharp 4 flute is, is the recommend, well, it's an 18 to 1 flute, so let's open that guy, uh, that tuning, that's also within your samples. And I know from experience we'll struggle with um, the E in both fingering configurations for that lower flute, so let's just not use those notes. You've seen me do this before. And let's run. Um, and you can also see that our starter flute had equal hole spacing. It had um, hole 5, the distance between hole 6 and 5 and 5 and 4. They were the same. And the same with the distance between three, hole 3 and 2 and 2 and 1. So let's do an optimization for all the notes except for the ones that we the one note with the two fingerings that we took out for both scenarios and we'll do a grouped hole size and position. And for this um, let's just use the default constraints. So that's a one and a quarter inch maximum spacing between holes of each hand and there's two hole groups. Um, a pretty standard for for how we make make flutes. And Let's just optimize that flute. And let's name it something that we can recognize. And let's call it square optimized. And let's do the same thing with the hemispherical end. Notice that we didn't have to change the constraints. It's the same constraints. Uh, it doesn't care what our, our initial bore shape is. It's not going to change that bore shape. And again, optimize that one. Didn't take any longer to optimize that flute. And we'll call that um, Hemiopt. Now if we do look, look at the two flutes, the square end should still be square. It is. And the, the hemi end should be still hemispherical, and it still is. And we can see then, how did the tuning come out? Well, for the square end, um, we have about 12 cents average deviation. So with those with experience, uh, it's with a one and a quarter inch um, hole spacing, maximum hole spacing, it's very hard to, to, to get an in tune, chromatically tuned um, flute in with 
a D sharp E flat. And with the hemispherical end, um, we did a little better. Um, that's not to say that that's the right, uh, that you, therefore you should always use hemispherical end flutes, but um, um, it, it did pretty well. So that's the first part of support, and it, like I say, you can take your square-ended uh, starters, give them a hemispherical end, and use any of these first four optimizer strategies, and they'll work just fine, and they always have. Um, however, Prior to version 1.0.6, there was a single taper with grouped holes and a single taper with no hole groupings. These two optimizer strategies totally rebuild the bore. So what would happen if I had taken this hemi flute, remember it has a hemispherical bore, and ran it with a single taper grouped hole, so it's, the, it's comparable to the grouped hole, except it's going to put um, possibly a taper somewhere in the flute. So let's again open the default constraints, which will be comparable, inch and a quarter spacing, two hole groups, um, but with a taper in it somewhere, um, and do the optimization. Now, putting a taper in is a more complex optimization problem, so it will take longer. The optimizer is efficient. The harder the problem, the longer it takes. Um, on my gamer laptop, this might take 20 to 30 seconds. And we should get there. Yep, 30 seconds. And if we look at the bore profile that that created, you'll see that we lost the hemispherical end. That's because these taper optimizers totally rebuild the bore. All they respect when they start off is the bore diameter at the foot and the position at the top of, of the bore. That's, and other than that, they recreate the bore. Um, the optimiz optimization that this found is kind of a cute one. It has a smaller neck and a, um, a taper right before the first hole, the, the top hole, hole six, and then a straight bore. Um, bet you you've never tried this configuration. How is its, its tuning? Um, its tuning is really excellent. Uh, so, might be something you want to try. Um, so, you can see that um, to support a hemispherical end, we needed a dip different optimizer to do that. And so I built an optimizer. Again, this optimizer um, builds the whole, whole bore profile from scratch, but it puts a hemispherical head at the top appropriate to the top diameter that the optimizer found. So it'll, it'll vary for each optimization run because this diameter will change. So let's take um, this hemispherical end and run that optimization. So first we have to define constraints, and again I'll just use the default constraints. Um, they're pretty much the same. Um, one and a quarter inch maximum spacing, two whole groups. Uh, in fact, there's nothing different in these parameters other than um, the optimizer that they're associated with. And let's run that optimization. should take about the same length of time. It still has the same number of variables it's manipulating. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to calculate the hemispherical bore on each iteration of the optimi optimization, but a very small length of time. In fact, it didn't take, it took less time. Um, 
Now if we look at that bore profile, we still have a hemispherical end. And that hemispherical end is not the same size that we started with because the bore profile is bigger at the top than the bottom. So the hemispherical end matches that diameter here. Um, did we get a, a better result or a worse result? Uh, well, we probably got a fairly comparable result. You can see that our final error was 122 in units of <laughs> some of the squared uh, sense deviation compared to 116. So if we just look at its tuning characteristics, um, it's three cents compared to um, the other one we just ran, which was 2.99. So very comparable um, flutes uh, as far as uh, how off their tuning is, how accurate their tuning is. Um, so what I have done is I've added two optimizer strategies that um, create as their end result a hemispherical end. One for grouped holes comparable to the single taper grouped hole and one with no hole grouping comparable to the single taper. So if you're using a square ended flute, you would use single taper um, grouped hole or single taper no hole grouping. And if you were using, um, you wanted your end result to be a hemispherical end, you would use these two hemi head ones. So now just one other comment, I started with this hemispherical ended flute um, for my starter. It had a hemispherical end. Uh, as I said, the optimizer completely creates that bore profile. So I could have just as easily, and it is even more easily, started with the square ended flute. So. It has the same diameter at the foot, 70, uh, 1 inch, and it has the same position at the top, minus an eighth of an inch. So let's start with that one, do the exact same optimization. Again, the constraints are the same, and run that optimization run. If I'm telling you the truth, I should get the same result. So notice this final error on our previous run of 122. Uh, we should get 122 this time. Should take about the same length of time. It's not doing anything different. Uh, it took the same length of time, and it gave me the same error. And if we look at the bore profile, yes, it put that same hemispherical end in the flute. In fact, it gave me identical results. Um, and the same tuning, 3.07. Yep. And so that's how you work with hemispherical ends. And I would imagine that um, a ma majority of people that make flutes um, have not bought uh, a gun drill rig and used the lathe to bore their flutes. And so they'll, you should take good advantage of this hemispherical support. Um, as always, there's the standard URLs that you might find useful, um, the release page, and uh, when 1.0.6 is posted shortly after <laughs> this publishing, uh, you'll find it here. Uh, issues pages if you, you find problems. Um, will be here. Um, the tutorials, of which this is one, is found on this page, and uh, written documentation for some of the features in WI Designer is here. So I hope you enjoy this new feature and have a good day.